Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? It's Big Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing. Yeah that's right, all you gimps out there who keep saying I'm not the voice of hardcore boxing. <laughs> you know I am, you know it's Uncle Porky time. <laughs> You've heard of Hammer Time haven't you? Well it's Porky time. Oink oink. As people keep saying. Nice one to uh, Simon for your email just now. Uh, your emails now are going to my spam and I don't look at those. Uh, thank you for the death threat, Simon. Simon Roberts. Is it from Kettering? Good old Simon Roberts. It's nice to know that people want to chop my kids up into little, peep into little pieces and uh, rape my children's mum. Very nice, but it is what it is, isn't it? It's a boxing industry for you. If you've got a problem, Simon, or anybody got a problem, July 5th, I'll be at Dennis Hobson's show ringside. Come and see me, we'll get you on channel and we'll get it out of your system, eh? I'll turn you into a lover, not a hater. Right, uh, I want to call this video, why? Sorry, I want to call this video, Tony Bellew is coming back at heavyweight. No. Tony Bellew to return. Now, everybody knows that I don't really like Tony Bellew, but so what? You don't like me. I don't like him. Sometimes in life you just don't like people. He did a snide trick, ringing up Dennis Hobson, and he knows what he said on phone. He knows what was said. Uh, it obviously backfired on you, Tony, didn't it? But Tony Bellew is a snide. Uh, we all know the text message he used to send Frank Warren when he was with Frank and all the little stunts that he used to pull. Look, it is what it is, isn't it? We know what Tony Bellew is, don't we? Right. Now, what I'm going to do now, right, I'm just going to explain a couple of, a few things to you about how the boxing industry works. Now, Tony Bellew, I always get a bit of stick off Dennis because Tony Bellew bigs him up. Dennis Biggs, sorry, Dennis Biggs, Tony Bell, you up, right? He's a promoter's dream, he's this, he's that. If I'd have had him, if I'd have had Clinton behaving like that, when I had Clinton, we'd, have, we'd, be, we'd be making mega money. But Clinton, just some people just don't go in him to carry off like Bell, you have they? You know, Clinton did his talking in the ring. He beat more world champions than Tony Bell, you. I mean, Tony Bell, you didn't even beat a champion. Bell you beat Hay, a former champion, and cleverly at the time a former champion. He has not beat a champion in the ring. He has not beat a champion in the ring. I can't emphasise how important that is. Now, when boxers go to after parties, what they do, a lot of them feel inferior when they're, in, when they're with other boxers. Now, I, I know boxers who are champions and they just won't sit in the company with other champions because they all start to spout off, don't they, when the, dr when the drink's flowing and sometimes the drugs are flowing and, you know, they, they, they all like to spout off, don't they? Could have been a runner bean and all that and shoulda, woulda, coulda and I did this, I did that and I shoulda done this, I shoulda done that. Well, Tony Bellew probably feels a bit inferior when he's in... Uh, He's in company with other boxers, because a, a lot of other boxers out there will know Tony's record. They'll know that basically he piled Eddie Earn up. He, you know he, he couldn't do enough for him, and I've always got your back, Eddie, and blah 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 blah. blah. Giving it all that, giving it the big licks. But the bottom line is this: Tony Bellew's CV suggests that he has not beat a champion, not at Central Area level, nor at English level. Not at British level, not at Commonwealth, not at European level, and not at world level. He has not took a belt off a champion. So how can people call him a proper world a champion? It's not a cha he's not a champion, is he? People can say, yeah, Porky, but Carl Froch beat Abraham for a vacant WBC, and he beat uh, Pascal for a vacant. WBC as well, yeah that's true, but he also beat Bootate champion and took WBA off Kessler, didn't he? And European champion won't fight him and you know that you know it's a lot of politics get involved but Carl Froch is not going around shouting and bawling, is he? You know what I mean? He, 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 you know, he's he's got eleven elite wins on his record. Eleven elite wins now. Tony Bellew's got what? 
How many elite wins are on his record? Could you call the David A wins elite? You couldn't, could you? You couldn't call them elite. No. Could you call the the hey the the sorry the cleverly fight? Could you call that an elite win? The cleverly. No, you couldn't. He dragged him up twenty five pound on the night. You were giving away seventeen pound cleverly, and it were, and it was a stinker. It was the worst pay per view ever. And Eddie Hearn were telling people that he'd probably never put him in a in another pay per view again. So Bellew knew he had to think on his feet. But this is why I also say that Tony Bellew. He's a controversial, isn't he? Look, I've heard he's probably a nice guy in real life, and he might be, but I, can, I don't know him, do I? I can only go on the way he behaves on, on social media, but he promotes himself, he gets him out there. A bit like David Allen, he gets his son out there, and he's never won a belt, but he's in the mix. You have to sell yourself, so there's nothing about nothing against that, but Bellew, let me tell you, has not beat a champion now. You go through his record... I've got it in front of me here, and it's probably one of the worst CVs I've ever known for a man that's got the clean sweep. I call the clean sweep, no, no, the British Commonwealth European and World title. You know, the clean sweep is all six, or you can just, you can miss the central area in English and go for the rest of them, but he's got the clean sweep like Clinton Woods, and... First thing I'm going to go on about is this. Tony Bellews, right, is, he's 37 this year, so he's still got time on his side, but he's coming back as a heavyweight now. People keep saying he's not, and Eddie Hearn sent me an email saying he ain't. Look, Tony Bellews coming back at heavyweight, all right, the feelers are already out. I don't, know if you, I don't know if people know this, but they're making way for him in the gym already. Now, Gavin McDonnell, he's been fired out at gym by Coldwell. Coldwell's told him that he's not good enough now, he's not got it no more. So Gavin McDonnell is not even training with Coldwell no more. So he's out, he's out at picture up there, I'm hearing. Now, I'm hearing that Bellew is going to be coming back. Now, Bellew... He's a businessman. He's very smart as regards money. Now, he used to work in insurance, so he knows what it's like to get up in the morning and go to work. So he appreciates a pound note. He's got houses all over. Now, he'll be thinking, I don't have to make weight. I could have a couple of easy ones and pick up some money and just top up my pension. This is how fighters think. This is how Carl Froch thinks. The businessmen, aren't they? The businessmen, they see fighters pinching money and they want some of it. Now, Bellew, he's going to come back at every weight. Now, the first thing I'm going to pull Bellew up on is this. I was actually a Tony Bellew fan when he was in the ABAs. Now, my argument is he should have come at... Come and come and turn pro as an heavyweight. He didn't. He tried to f he tried to con everybody by doing light heavyweight, right? And thinking he'd carry his power through. Now it didn't work out for him, did it? Because when he faced the top guys at light heavyweight, we know what happened, don't we? He got pinged about, didn't he? He got iced by. Uh, he got iced, didn't he? By Stevenson. He got knocked out by Stevenson. He quit in that fight. He turned away. Now, he quit. He struggles against... He struggles against boxers. That's what he struggles against. He couldn't do not with Chilemba. Now, he fluked the rematch against Chilemba during the first fight, but... It is what it is. The Nathan Cleverly fight, he lost that fight, but I thought that could have gone either way. But we're talking Nathan Cleverly. Nathan Cleverly had never beat a champion at the time. And he were a WBO champion. <laughs> he worked that one out. I know it, it, it just gets worse, doesn't it? But and we go through his record here, right? Bellew's record. Who was he? Who was he fucking beat? Bob Achi safe. He fought him when he were eight and one, and, and, and you know, and that were life and death. That were a life and death. You know, against the guy with nine with nine fights. You know, Oval McKenzie, he had to fight him twice. That were a, that were a life and death. You know, it, do you know do you know do you know what I'm saying? That were a life and death. Now, Nathan cleverly rematch won it. 
So sorry, the Nathan Cleverly. Uh, he lost against Nathan Cleverly. Then he beat da Danny McIntosh, and he was only really a novice, fifteen fight novice. So you know, he, he never really impressed me, Danny McIntosh. He was a frotcher's sparring partner. He used to get flogged on a daily basis. Edison Miranda were an old man. You know, I mean, what what's going on here? You know, th th then we've got Belonte. Where did they dig him up from? Belonte. They dropped him in round one and three, and then he couldn't he couldn't get him out of there. He went. He ended up going twelve rounds. You know, <sighs> unbelievable. But. Uh, but I suppose you could give you could give LU every round in that fight, but you couldn't get him out there. But Isaac Chilemba, we know what happened there. He had to put he had to correct the the split decision draw. And then Adonis Stevenson, a southpaw, he couldn't deal with him. He got knocked out. Um then then he's like fighting Broodoff and Santos and he drag and then he gets a pay-per-view on back of Broodoff and Santos. I mean how, how did that pay-per-view come about? Bellew's first pay-per-view. Broodoff. He lo he loses to Stevenson on a non-pay-per-view. Then he gets Broodoff and Santos. And then he's fighting on a pay-per-view in Sky. Oh my god, and it was and it was sold as intense beef. Then you've got Bakurin and Kuli Corsius. What what the fucking hell are these? Then Masternek. I mean, these are all Dosser fights. And then he gets a Goodison Park. Sky, so he's got a stadium fight in Liverpool that didn't sell out against a guy who's never been never who's never won a title and it's a vacant belt. And then after that he's got BJ Flores. Then that's it. He just don't want to go into the super se the sorry the World Boxing Super Series and prove that he carries power when really a 59% KO ratio. That doesn't mean you carry power 59%. All them people out there are thinking I'm hating on Tony Bell, you. I'm not hating on him. I'm just telling it straight. Do I like him? No, I don't fucking like him, but I'm not hating on him. I don't hate anybody. Only way, only reason I'd hate on somebody is if they grasped me and got me to prison or if they did something bad against my uh, children's mum or my, ch or my children. I'd hate somebody then and, you know, I'd, I'd take it personally. You know, if they did any of them things or if they put me behind bars, anybody that's put me behind bars, uh, you know, that... That they've had a bad time of it, you know, and that's happened in the past, but I'm not going to go down that road. Uh, I don't hate on Tony Bell, I actually admire him, but I don't like the bullshit, you know, about I want to disappear and uh, I carry power. No, you don't. I want to disappear. No, you haven't. You know, you're coming back at heavyweight, but I, had, I actually admire him. I think technically he is a good fighter, but he's not technically better than Usek, and like I said, he beat BJ Flores. He then, what did they do then? They wheeled out David Hay, held together by sellotape. You know, so from BJ Flores in October 2016, for, for the next 19 months, we had Tony Bellew in our faces and David Hay. 19 months that went on for. And after that 19 month of selling the David Hay cons because that's all they were basically cons and the people involved in the con were Eddie Hearn, David Hay, uh, Tony Bellew, Adam Smith, Johnny Nelson, Coogan Cassius from IFL, Sky Sports, those people were involved in those two con jobs and that's what they were simply con jobs and there were a lot of hate from between both fighters and fake punches thrown at at press conferences, and then there were loves and kisses after the fight, and I love him, and he set my kids up for life, and, and then it went back to hate, and everybody got on the hate vibe, and, you know, and, and, and then it went back to love again, now it's love again, and, you know, and who's to say that they're not going to fight again at heavyweight, you know, is, is that going to happen, I mean, now that Joshua's lost the belts, you know, Tony Bellew's dusting his gloves down, he's going to be thinking, do you know what, 
I can fight Andy Ruiz after Joshua beats him next. And, uh, you know, I, but I could beat Andy Ruiz because he's just the right height for me. And he's, you know, he's the right arm reach. And these are the vibes that, you know, are going around the gyms at the moment in Sheffield and Rotherham. And, you know, I, I get to know these things. And I, I'm hearing that, you know, Tony Bellew, he's going to come back and, you know, that there's pay-per-view fights there for him if he wants it at heavyweight. I've heard Eddie Hearn been coming out with things like Tony doesn't have to make weight and Tony's running around saying he doesn't have to make weight and so's Dave Colwell and Dave Colwell by the sounds of it is clean it, clearing out his uh, gym and making way for Tony Bellew. I mean these are the rumours doing the rounds and... You know, if it's not true, pick up the phone, Dave Caldwell. You can get my number off anybody. Get it off Richard Towers. You know, and he, he's got my number. Pick up the phone, Dave. If it's not true, come on the channel and uh, stop the rumours. But the rumours are gathering pace by the day. Tony Bellew is going to come back at every weight. And, you know, he's going to pick up millions on pay-per-view and... You know, that's what we're hearing. And so what I want to know is, what has Tony Bellew got on those at Sky? What has he got to be coming back and even thinking that he can get pay-per-view fights? Even thinking about it? I mean, oh my God. I mean, are we having our, our balls tickled again or what? I mean, Bellew said he was going to disappear. He hasn't disappeared. He's coming back, folks. He's coming back for pay-per-view fights at heavyweight. And like I've said to you, like I've said, there are fights for Tony Bellew at heavyweight. Now, people may say, no, there is not fights for him at heavyweight. Trust me. Trust me. I am in the know. People who are saying you're not in the know... They're just haters. They're not followers. Now, I am telling you now. Let's look at it. Let's look at it from this point of view. Andy Ruiz. Would Tony Bellew fight Andy Ruiz? Yeah. He'd fight Andy Ruiz. Andy Ruiz is box track number one. He's got Joshua to fight next. But there's 1,035 heavyweights in the world. Andy Ruiz is shorter than Tony Bellew. He's got shorter legs and he's got shorter arm reach. Would Tony Bellew fight Wilder? No, I don't think he'd fight Wilder. I don't think he would. Would he fight Joshua? No, I don't think he would. Not with the amount of rimming that he does about Joshua, but he's probably kicking himself now, thinking, God, I wish I would have fought Joshua. Would he fight Tyson Fury? Well, he says no because Wilder's arms are too long. He won't fight him. So surely he'd not fight Tyson Fury, but he's saying he would. Would he fight Povetkin? Yes, he would. Would that be a pay-per-view? Yes, it would. I mean, I'm hearing rumours that Povetkin uh, could be having a pay-per-view fight on Sky soon. So, yes, Tony Bell, you would fight Povetkin. And yes, that would be pay-per-view on Sky, knowing their criteria, criteria. Would he fight Dillian White? Yes, he would. Would he fight Miller? Eddie says he won't work with Jarrell Miller. Tony Bellew would fight Jarrell Miller on pay-per-view. He'd be the good guy who doesn't take drugs against the bad guy, the villain, who, who's took drugs. Would he fight Luis Ortiz? Yeah, he'd fight Luis Ortiz. They'd sell it as the good guy who doesn't take drugs and the bad guy who's failed drug tests. And the, Tony would also sell it as the bogeyman, the man that nobody wants to fight. Would he fight Pulef? Yeah, he would. He'd turn that into a Pulef as a sex offender. Or, uh, or something like that, like he did the Adonis Stevenson fight, then afterwards he were hugging and kissing him. Would he fight, uh, then it gets a bit messy, yeah, Parker, would he fight Joseph Parker? Yeah, he'd fight Joseph Parker. Uh, Joseph Parker is six foot four, Tony's six foot three and a half. Yeah, he'd fight Joseph Parker, he's been on record as saying he'd fight him. After Joseph Parker, it all gets a bit messy, doesn't it? Going down that down the uh, the rankings, you know, you've got Kaunaki, Brazil, Aima, Rivers. I mean, fucking hell, what's Rivers doing in, uh, on a pay-per-view with Dillian White? Ergovic, uh, I don't think he'd fight him, I think he'd be too big for him. Chisora's his pal, Charlie Martin, fucking hell, would they dig him up? Thomas Adamek, fuck me, he's 43 next, isn't he? Yui Fury, I don't think he'd fight Yui. I think Yui beats Tony Bellew. Dave Allen, fuck 
Fucking hell, would Dave Allen be pay-per-view? Fucking hell. If that were pay-per-view, I think I'm going to dust my gloves down and make a fucking comeback. Uh, Romanoff. Uh, no, Marco Walk, no, Elenius, no, Spilker, no, Tackham, fucking maybe, they could dig, ta dig ta Tackham up, Bryant Jennings, uh, Trevor Bryan, he's got a ranking, and he, Trevor Bryan, he's fought fucking nobody, Joe Joyce, he won't fight him, he'd fight Bryan and Jennings though, he'd swerve Joyce, he'd fight Caballel, if it were pay-per-view, but I don't think that would sell. It'd have to be somebody that we've seen before, although Caballel's beat Chisora. Uh, there's a, a whole host of fights there for Tony Bellew to get his teeth into. And uh, let me tell you, Tony Bellew on pay-per-view, love him or hate him, he will be pay-per-view at every way, and he is coming back, let me tell you. He will look at it like I'm coming back to save long legs, his mate Eddie Earn. And would Tony Bellew be worth £20 on pay-per-view? Well, I'd pay for it, wouldn't I, because I don't like him, and that's what Tony Bellew wants. He wants us to not like him or like him. I don't like the bullshit he comes out with, but let me tell you, he's coming back. Cole well won't be on 10%, it'll be on a fee, but he will be back and it'll be pay-per-view and that's just how boxing goes. Uh, if I got to know Tony Bellew in real life, I'd probably like him because there isn't a boxer that I've met that I've never liked, never disliked, but going on how he behaves, I don't like him and like I said, he did a bad trick to me, ringing up Dennis Hobson and saying what he said. Uh, Dennis would never lie to me, he's one of my closest friends in the world, uh, he's been like a big brother to me last four and a half years so yeah he uh bell you would come will come back at every weight and uh yeah, probably, I'd probably get on with him. Uh, Chris Smedley says to me, you'd probably get on with him, Russ, in real life. And uh, I know that Chris Smedley admires him. I don't think he, Chris admires his trainer, Dave Colwell. But we're not going to that. But you've got to take, it, you've got to take your hat off to Bell, you on limited... Uh, on a limited CV, he's done really, really well, hasn't he? A very, very limited CV. Like I said, he's not beat a champion. He's, he's known as this big banger, but... Oh, was he really banged? Oh, was he really, really banged? Oh, was he iced? Oh, was he iced? Who was, you know, who was top level? I don't, I don't see him icing anybody at, at top level at all. I mean, let's have a look. Oh, he's, oh, he's knocked out uh, in in world level fights. Tony Bellew. Let's have a look. Oh, he, oh, he's knocked out. Uh, have a look. Right, oh sec. Right, Tony Bell, you have to go through this bit to get to. Tony Bell, you weigh 199 and a quarter pound to fight Usek. So he's probably. He'll probably kill him to take. The, when he fought David A, you were 224 and a half, so. Tony Bellew's had to take two stone off, hasn't he? So that two stone's back on now. Sure as eggs are eggs, that two stone's back on now. He's probably a 230 man. He's probably, he'd probably be 230 if he came back. Right, 230, which is what? Well, 210 is, always remember this, 15 stone is 210 pound. Now... £210 is 15 stone. So another £20 on that, 16 and a half stone, isn't it? 16, 16, 6. It's probably, Bellew will probably come back 16 and a half stone. But getting back to who has Tony Bellew knocked out at world level. Well, let's have a look at his world title wins. He's got two world title wins. Macabu, he knocked him out. And Flores, he knocked him out, both early, in three rounds. So, in world title fights, he did knock people out at cruiserweight. So that's good. That's good. I'm filming. I'm filming. Two so, I'm going to make it five, yeah? All right, then. Yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah. I'll make it five o'clock because I'm filming. Pardon? What have I just said? Five o'clock in a bit. Right. 
Right, so... So basically, yeah, he's knocked people out at world level, two out of two, at cruiserweight. So, kudos to Tony Bellew. He knocked Flores out and Macabo, but they were in world title fights. But what have they done since then? What has Macabo done? What has he done? He's not won a world title, has he? You know, he's, he's, he's been fighting guys, well... See, I can't even pronounce the names of these. He's just after Bellew, he beat a guy 7 11 and 0. Then he beat a guy 28 9 and 5. Then he beat a guy 19 2 and 1. Then he fought a guy 7 23 and 3. Fucking hell. Then he fought a guy 10 28 and 4. And then he's just beat a guy 23 and 2. So he hasn't won a world title since, since the Bellew episode. And that's over three years ago. And BJ Flores, Blowjob Flores, David A's T boy. Right, since Bellew beat him, he's fought a guy 26 and 18 and 1, and a guy 13, 6 and 2. That is fucking it. And he beat them, yeah, but a knockout in first round on one of them. And the other guy, uh, oh, he went six rounds of him on points. Then he lost to Trevor Bryan by TKO, and he's not beat fucking no one. And now he fights Otto Wallin. Fucking hell. He fights Otto Wallin on the 12th of July. So, he's not fucking special, is he? He's not a world champion. So, Bellew has not knocked a champion out, he's just knocked two guys out, who I class as maybe bums. But Macabo might end up fluking a, a cruiserweight belt, mine, but you never know, dear. It might be an IBO or... I don't know, but I don't see anybody on Bellew's record who is knocked out. Now, when I look at Bellew's record closely even further... I don't see anybody he's knocked out. He didn't knock Nathan Clever. He couldn't do nothing with him. Uh, he stopped Danny McIntosh, Edison Miranda, and you know Oval McKenzie. Uh, but he, did, he couldn't get he couldn't get rid of Bob Ash. You safe and so does Bellew carry power? Fifty nine percent. Is that carrying power? Fifty nine percent. No, I don't think it is carrying power. Fifty nine percent. No, I don't think fifty nine percent. KO ratio is carrying power. Uh, that's just how I look at it. I mean, Paul Smith, you know, who, who in boxing circles, is a, everybody says he's a joke, but, you know, I was a Paul Smith fan back in the day, and I quite liked him when he was an amateur, and when he turned pro, you know, I, I, I actually... <laughs> You know, I went to quite a few Paul Smith fights. He used to fight at MEN Arena a lot, and... Uh, you know, I even went to watch Paul Smith fight. One of my first times I ever went to Liverpool, I watched him fight Howard, Howard Clark. You know, and uh, he got into the ring at 172. You know, you know, he's supposed to be, you know, a, a middleweight. You know what I mean? He got into the ring at 172. So the discipline, what what wasn't there at an early stage in his career. You know, he was fighting at middleweight, but he got in at 172 against Howard Clark. And I remember everybody talking about it that day in the arena. And, but Paul Smith's KO ratio is 49%. You know, uh, <laughs> you know, and he was known as a feather duster man, Paul Smith. And so Bellew's 59%. And, you know, he's the only guys he's stopped in world title fights uh, uh, are Flores and Macabo. And, you know, yeah, he, he stopped David A, but fucking hell, David A would have to have by sellotape, wouldn't he? His leg snapped in one of them, and, and in the next one, he would just... It, they taped him up, didn't they, to get the pay-per-view. So, now, as far as I'm concerned, Tony Bellew doesn't carry power, but he might carry a heavyweight, because the two heavyweight fights he's had, he did stop David A, so... I don't know. So, maybe maybe Bellew feels that his, his career's... Uh, it, there's a question mark against it, and it, maybe he feels he's got points to prove, you know, he's not beat a champion, and maybe that'll be it, maybe that's what's drawing him back to his comeback, because he is coming back, you know, he, he is coming back, you know, and, and that's that's the gospel, so believe what you want to believe, Bellew's going to come back at heavyweight, trust me, and maybe he'll, maybe Tony will make me, turn me into a Tony Bellew fanboy, but at the moment, I don't like him, but keep on trucking Tony, keep supporting boxing, and 
Ryan. Keep watching the channel. Shout out to Climber Cool and uh, Castle Conservatives of Doncaster. Tata.